name is Alexandre Heim. My name is Alexandre and I'm working for the Asiba team. Does someone doesn't know uh, Asiba? Which company is Asiba? Everybody knows? Okay. So I'm working for the Asiba team and uh, I was uh, first hired as a developer uh, during my... Uh, I did an internship in, uh, in Asiba uh, in order to uh, develop ACSMS and work on ACI mailing which, which is ACI mailing, not ACI Y mailing, not ACI mailing, but ACI mailing. <laughs> and uh, so I first what I uh, as developer and um, the, the main subject I, I had to work on it was ACSMS. So um, year after year I had to change a little bit the subject I was working on and now I'm uh, focusing on the customer support and the way we handle the, the, the support and the community and uh, it's something new for me, but it's really interesting and it, this is something that I love to do to uh, understand what we are doing in a wrong way and what we can improve in order to make our customer more happy. So that's my first presentation in English, so it's a little bit scary and I will probably have some words which won't be perfectly said or perfectly should choose, yes, but feel free to stop me, ask me for more information if you need it or correct me. If you correct me, we maybe can do a deal and maybe I can send you a coupon or something like this then <laughs> in order to thank you for the help and thank you for everything. So let's start. Um, <laughs> In this presentation, I will uh, talk about uh, four, the four most important points, uh, rules, I think we, you should follow in order to uh, make, sure, make your customer happy. Uh, the first one is to start off your customer relationship on solid basis, then I will speak about rules you must not forget when you're talking with your customers. The third one is to detect and manage difficult situations because every every company and every every support team have uh, difficult situations. So uh, I will give you some tips we have and some uh, advices to to handle this situation in the easiest, easiest way. And then I will show you and uh, give you the. Um, the things you will have and you will obtain after having uh, set a good uh, relationship with your customers. So let's start with the first point, which is start customer start off your customer relationship on solid basis. I think that this is uh, the dream the dream we have. It's an empty inbox without many tons of emails without discussion with discussions which are taking a lot of time and that is something which never happens i don't know if you're is there someone here who already have finished a, a morning or a day with, with this kind of situation i don't think so Okay, so everyone in our team and everybody wants and would be glad to have an empty inbox and being able to focus on the, what we are working on, so uh, development and uh, doing website or things like that. And this was the, um, the main idea we, and the main uh, the main thing we should focus on. So being able to um, work on what we do, what we really do and not spending time on doing support, sending email and having to handle difficult situations. So 
here is the reality. The reality is notifications everywhere on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google, and it's something which is really, really difficult to manage because there are also a lot of ways to contact you uh, on these different platforms. So on Facebook, we have in a server, we have comments on our photos, we have people who send us private messages, we, we have people who post on our pages, and we are spending a lot of time of, uh, on these different situations and this different way of talking and uh, doing support with our, with our um, customers. So that's something which is not cool and not really worth it because when we connect Facebook we all know that we see notifications, we reply to our client but we can also see a, new, a friend who have posted a new photo or something which could disrupt us from the, from the, the, the main thing we, would, we wanted to do. So, the, this is the reality, it did something, that's something people should improve and find a way to improve this. Furthermore, uh, we were doing um, support and uh, we were managing the support on Gmail. Does someone use Gmail for the support and for the contact here? Really? Okay, so here is what Gmail looks like when you have thousands of females or hundreds of females to manage every day. That's not a good solution. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we were used to doing it in the past and it was not worth it at all because let's let explain and let's give some points which are not uh, efficient, cool and uh, for example in Gmail there is, as for me, no way, in my opinion, no way to be organized at all. We have, we are in the company, we are working, we have let's say three people who manage the support and uh, who reply to clients and the worst thing with Gmail is to assign discussion, to um, collect information from the users and also to yes, uh, manage situations in which we need to talk with our colleagues in order to get information. For example, I receive an email and I need to have an information from Thomas, which is one of my colleagues to be able to answer the clients. I have two, solu two solutions. First one is to forward the email, but when we forward an email, it's really difficult to um, read again all the discussion, find the correct information, and find all the, all the information we need to, to find the problem, to, to try to find a solution. The other things is that in Gmail, we were not able to find if the client was someone who already contacted us in the past. It was really difficult to find the old discussion we had and it was really difficult to find if it is a client with an active license, it's, if it's a free client, if it's a question about sales, about technical support, about other subjects. So it was really, really, really difficult to do it via Gmail. So we we looked for another solution and we found something which was we found we we asked ourselves what was the main idea and what what we wanted to do. And we want we wanted what we wanted to do was to um, centralize people in the same place and not not to have notifications everywhere, I mean, not to have email, notification on Facebook, Twitter posts, forum, forum posts because we had the forum and not spending time on different platforms, doing, having to connect on different platforms to reply and to make our customer happy. So 
the, the main idea was to take the, all the contact requests and manage them in a unique place and make sure to have people in a kind of waiting list to make sure to handle everything in a, in a correct way. So the solution was an help desk. Does someone use an help desk here? Really? <laughs> and which, what's what help desk? What, what, use? what, what do you mean by help desk? I mean something like software. Uh, a yes, a platform on a website which allows you to uh, a kind of ticketing system. Yeah, the OS OS ticketing. Okay. OS. Okay. There are a lot of solution. Uh, very. It's we open source, so yeah. Okay. We yeah. as for us. Uh, we we use help scots. Help scots. We don't have deal with them, but I know I can't imagine uh, starting a, a new project or starting a um, new kind of customer relationship even without using this tool. Help scots is a website in which you can centralize your email address like as you can see we have design at assistiva.com, e-commerce at assistiva.com and this is a perfect solution to assign tickets, to assign discussion between the team and to manage all the contact requests in one unique place and be able to not connect everywhere on every platform and have multi discussion for example people who are not happy who send us tweets, who, com uh, who comment our images, who send us a private message and send us an email. Here, we have all in one place and we manage everything in one single place and that's a really, really, really good thing. And also, you can have like these different mailbox to be able to focus on different subjects. For example, we, we send templates so there is one people in the team who manage the templates and all the contact requests about templates or design or C CSS and he don't have to open Gmail and have thousands of emails about different subjects and different kind of contact. Another, here is how a conversation looks like in uh, episodes. So here I was in the unassigned tickets and unassigned tickets are tickets who are not assigned to anybody and here you can see how we handle a contact, a new contact from a customer. On the right we are able to have all the contact information at the top, so the email address, is Facebook page and we have also the previous conversation with this user so it's really easy to find the previous conversation find if the user was happy not happy when he previously contacted us and it's really really important to be able to find if he's contacting you about a new uh, problem or something he already had previously and also you can add custom information this uh, custom information we will add it thanks to the API of a API from web Scots. and this uh, information coming from our Asiva website so we can see that he is someone who is using Asimilating Enterprise so he is a customer we, we should pay attention to and he is not a free user who is simply uh, asking questions. It is in French, but we can see uh, the orders made on our website. We can find its subscriber information and then we can focus on the discussion. So, here the discussion was about work wrapping options, and I made an example of a note that I've written and here you can see the option to assign to the discussion and here I was I'm able to select the, my, the colleague I want to assign the discussion to so for example if this, the question was 
too com difficult for me was about plugin and I would be able to make a note for Jeremy who is the guy who managed the plugin and who is the plugin master in uh, Asiva and write him something like uh, Hi Jeremy, I'm looking for some information and I can't find the correct way to answer him so please uh, could you handle these tickets and just add a note and assign to Jeremy then on the left we can see that there are mine which are option which is the place you will find all the tickets which are assigned to yourself and so Jeremy will have a new ticket in its mine place and you will see the tickets coming with the notes saying that I need him to provide me with some help and he will be able to manage the ticket to reply to the client so that's something really really interesting to be able to manage everything in the correct way to be able to focus on tickets which are assigned to you and um, that's something really 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 um, useful now after providing you with some tools in order to reply to your client to do it in a correct way I'm going to talk about rules you must follow and you must not forget to reply to your client the first one is a simple one is to give love to your clients and make them happy I found a sentence on the internet which was perfect one and the sentence was customers don't love as much don't love you as much as you do and I think that's that's correct because when I purchase something for example a computer or phone I want it to be working and I don't want to have any problem and I don't want to have to contact the support team to ask why this is not working why do I need to do in order to make it work and that's really frustrating, frustrating. but as a company we love everybody and we are happy to have contacts we, have happy, we are happy to have new clients to have people who are sending us some love like the present we had from the Polish uh, community and uh, we love our clients but our clients don't love us as much as we do so that's something really important to provide them with some love and commiserate with your clients everybody here uh, is someone here who already contacted the um, Apple support no one? the um, Apple support is really is ending handling it in a perfect way they are always commiserating with us like with sentences like um, I can understand, I know, you're right that's frustrating they commiserate with us and that's that's make the customer happy and people instead of saying him uh, you're wrong no you're, you're doing it in the wrong way they are always speaking in a positive way and um, they are always trying to understand your problem instead of saying you're stupid and you're, you're doing something which is wrong so give love to your clients and be patient, tolerant because they are not on the same computing level if I can say that and you have to give love second one is to be reactive. In Asiba, when we end up tickets and when we reply to our customer, we try and we always uh, reply the first answer and the first contact in less than 24 hours. And, and I think, I didn't check the stats, but I think we reply the first contact in less than 10 hours in reality. I, we try to always um, reply in a short time to be, uh, to be sure that clients won't be frustrated and 
won't be won't go into a kind of paranoia i don't know if the world okay so perfect <laughs> because when i know as personal experience when i'm contacting a support and when i don't have re any reply in the three days i'm i'm feeling a, a kind of stress because i'm starting to say myself that maybe they didn't receive the contact maybe they don't want to reply maybe and i don't understand so be reactive reply as quick as possible to the first contact to reassure the people the your customer and to make to make him happy and make him thinking that you're working on this problem you're here from to help them and you're present also another thing to do is to reply so the first email quickly but then you have to uh, take time to reply to a customer because if uh, some some weeks ago we did a test which was um, we tried to reply as quick as possible to every ticket we received and people started to contact us for any reason thinking that we are kind of chats and they, they had questions and they didn't try to find a solution because we were really really reactive and so instead of taking a look at the documentation instead of searching for the information in the internet they, they took the easiest way and they send, send us an email so first contact be reactive but then in the discussion you can take a kind of a, a little bit of time to let them search by themselves and let them find the solution try to find the solution uh, instead of contacting you for every question they have first thing is to manage your priorities when you connect to your mailbox or to your help desk on the morning you have to uh, focus on the emails which are the more important for example we have let's say dozens of emails every morning and we start focus to focus on important user people who have paid for our solution who have paid to have a support for us and we focus on this kind of people first then we take a look at is it a feature request is it a bug report or is it a simple question about how to configure as emailing or how to configure our product so we start with bug reports because that's the most important thing and we, if someone has a bug it means that all our user has the same bug so we focus on that first then we handle the feature request people who are saying or asking for new features and then we reply to people who have simple questions about how to configure let me to find a solution for this and we manage our priorities even if someone writes an email with a subject like your John, please help me, I need you, in caps lock. We focus on people who, on the main subject of the email and on the, the main thing we, we should focus. Another thing is to find the real problem. Most of our users are contacting us about, by saying, I want to do something and I need your help to do this and I need you to help me to do this but in most of the case the problem is not here but the problem is here because for example uh, last week someone contacted us about in order to have some um, information and to have an helping hand about uh, SQL requests so instead of focusing about the requests and trying to find what was wrong we started to ask him uh, what he really wanted to do 
what was the main purpose, what was the goal of the, the user goal, in order to try to understand how could we, could we help him. And the idea was that he was trying to import user into the assimilating uh, receivers and he didn't find the solution so he tried to do it via a SQL request and instead of focusing on the requests we took this information and we told him we have something which is already present in assimilating we already have a page to import your user then feel free to use this page instead of trying to do something which is really difficult to do as we have already something to handle this so find the real problem not you should not focus on what your user are saying but you should focus on what was what is the real real problem and what what is why he is contacting you Oops. Another, another thing is to be understandable that's not maybe my case at the moment, <laughs> I'm doing my best, but the idea is to make sure, speak clearly and adapt yourself to, your, to the people who are talking to. There are people who are developers, there are people who are just sim simply building websites, there are people who are simply trying to do something with Joomla even if they don't even know how Joomla works, how the website works and you have to adapt yourself to your conversation partner and you have to write things which are really simple to do and you have to you can't be technique and speak in a technical way to your user because you will probably lose them and then lose them and then people will start to try to understand and you will send too many emails to this user so really be understandable last thing is being able to say no to some specific users that's something which is really difficult but we are every day saying no to some customers because you can't accept everything, you can't accept every request, you can't accept every proposition you have because you are going to make your to-do list bigger and bigger and you will, won't be able to manage everything and to do everything and customer never forgets what you you are saying to him so if you accept every proposition, every feature request you will frustrate your user because you won't be able to do everything and they will start to think you are not someone um, someone they can trust in so just say no I can't do it at the moment I can't manage this I can't do it for you but tell, tell him in the right way so I've just added it in, the, in our to-do list we can't say we can't tell you when this will be done because we have a lot of things to do I'll be sure that we have added it, we have added, added it, but be, be honest and just say I don't know when we will be able to do it, but if you want to do it in a short time or in a short, yes, in a short time, let us know, I can send you a code or something like this, but you have to find a solution and not just say no, we don't want to do it, or no, we won't do it because it's kind of frustrating for the user. So the most info important things is to adapt yourself to your conversation partner, but, but all these rules won't protect you against difficult situations. Let me know if you have any question or, or any things to say about what I'm talking about or if I'm not clear, you have to tell me Okay, perfect. So, here I'm gonna um, present um, different kind of customers we have and different kind of people you can discuss with and I will give you some advices about how to handle them and how to reply to these clients. The first one is the shy one. 
and it's one of my favorites because it's someone who is always who always feels to disturb you and is always saying sentences like I'm sorry but I need an information uh, sorry for contacting you again but I'm not sure if this is working perfectly and someone who is always in the yes who fear always of disturbing you and this kind of people is pleasant and is someone you who, who need to give love to him and reassure this kind of people so say send in some love no worry you i'm happy to see you i'm happy to talk to you no so reassure this kind of people it's the most important thing second one is the aggressive one and this one is the most difficult there's a lot of them yeah, yeah. it depends but there are, there are a lot of people who are yes aggressive so they are always in the need of something they don't want to wait they don't want to help you to solve the problem or to they don't want to give you the information you need to, to help them and they are never happy they are never satisfied they don't hesitate to treat you so here is an example of a message we received um, some weeks ago Someone so sent us this email. I bought and paid your product and now you're causing me problems by lies and deception. You are terrorizing me with your blunder <laughs> mistakes and harassment. You need to pay ten thousand of dollar in compensation with exclamation mark on the wall line. Read below details and extend my license to for two years for this discomfort and unjust and unfair treatment. Wow. That was the first email we received from this customer and here this was a kind of panic in the team by trying to find the solution and trying to find what was going wrong but we didn't have the information to fix and find the problem so I replied and I said thank you for your email I didn't say you're stupid why are you uh, talking like that I'm as I, start, I started in a positive way. Thank you for your email. Well, thanks for contacting us. Please let me know what was the problem. And please give, give us as many information as possible in order to help you to, to give you some help and to find and to fix the solution, the problem. And the problem was a simple one. He was trying to log in on our website by using email address and password. And in order to connect on our website, you need to put your username and your password, not your email address and your password. And we had this kind of aggressive people who were saying that we were terrorizing him just because he, said he was trying to connect by using his email address. So when someone is aggressive, you need to ask for as many information, you have to use Chine expression like I understand, don't worry, you're right, please let me know and be patient and comprehensive in order to find a solution, solve the solution and after my email saying that you're using your email address instead of your username so there is no problem, thanks for having contact us he never replied because I think it felt a little bit ashamed Shame then yes that was a funny situation another one is the stressful one so this people is someone who is always contacting you feeling that something is not normal or is not uh, acting in a correct way so the question are why is this acting like that? Is this no is this the normal behavior? Is this normal? And people which this kind of people uh, in the most case sends almost five or six emails at the same time talking about six different things and six different situations. So the idea with this kind of people 
is to focus on one subject at the, at the time. So tell him, first of all, let's, let's fix this problem, let's solve this problem, then we will talk about, uh, about the other one after the other. So be patient, you have to set boundaries for the discussion and temporize and make sure you're focusing on one subject at the time at the time, even if you receive 20 or 10, 10 emails at the same time, you should yes, set, set boundaries for the situation and make sure to focus on what subject at the time. Another one is the dealer. It is not the drug dealer, but the, I think the dealer is the correct way to say it. Is someone that's always asking for favors. So. Do you have any coupon? Uh, is it possible to do this for free? Can I? Uh, can you please provide me with your enterprise license for free or things like that? So this can is always negotiating and trying to find a way to obtain advantages and to option coupon, for example, from you. So how to under this situation is. Be patient, be able to say no, and tell him why you can't do it. No, I won't be able to provide you with a, a free enterprise license because we have worked a lot on this and we can't give it, give it for free because we need to live, we need, we need to eat and we need to, to, to continue to grow. So we can't do it and give him, give him the reason why you say no. Also, you can, you, you have to block him from being able to put you in, a, in an uncomfortable situation. So, that this kind of people is the people who, if you say, uh, yes, I will do it, or yes, this will be available in the future, this kind of people will never forget. And you can be sure that six months later, ten months later, he will contact you back asking for the feature and asking why this is not already implemented and not already present in the component. So don't promise things you won't be able to do. Say no and manage the situation in the correct way. Last one, my favorite one is the real friend. We have a lot of customers which contact us in a kind way. And we have a lot of customers who are really active, always uh, providing us with feature requests, ideas, and new features which could be integrated into assimilating and SMS. And this kind of people you need to keep them and you, you, need to, you need them to feel as much, um, as much happy as possible because I would say that most of the features which are present in IC meaning are coming from ideas from our customer and without our customer IC meaning would be a project which may have be finished in maybe one year because we we maybe had to focus on some things or some features which was not the correct one the best one and our customers bring us a lot of good ideas a lot of improvements which were really 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 important so you have to keep a good relationship with this user ask for news ask for advices for example provide them with some some exclusivities like the for example with ICSMS we contacted uh, some users to uh, give them a beta version of ICSMS in order to to say your customers which are really important for us do you want we are starting a new project do you want to try it do you want to take a look at it and then give us your feedbacks and it make it made them really happy to be included into the, the company and the decision of the company. So it's really important to keep this kind of people. The, 
the last thing is to be self-critical. It's the most difficult things, but you have to admit you were wrong, for example. You have to treat problems like this is the first one. You can't be upset by someone who is contacting you for a problem which has not been, been fixed since the last, last user. So you have to pay attention to the user feedbacks and don't let users leave your company or leave your business without trying to find a solution. We have some users who, were, who asked for a refund and instead of saying, yes, okay, let's do it, we tried to find a solution, to fix the solution and not to let him go away without finding and solving the situation. So customer is not always wrong and most, in most of the time the critics are justified so you need to find why they had a problem and you need to fix this in order to improve yourself and to make it better for other users so with all these advices um, you will be able to improve the, your brand image and you will be able to improve your uh, I don't have the word in English so it will be difficult but improve your, your company and the way people are talking about you the main thing and the most important thing for us is the customer support and last year in the GNB we had the, the trophy of best customer relationship uh, and best support in Joomla and this was something which was really, really cool for us because everyone was saying that we were doing it in the right way and everyone was happy and as if without the, um, the customer relationship and without the love of our customer we wouldn't be at the top position in the, in the Joomla extension directory and this is really important. For example, people will trust you in your future project, projects, in your future components and your sales will keep going because they will be happy. New people will see or will be recommended to use your component or use your solution or to work with you and this will bring you a lot of positive things to, to continue in the in the correct way another thing is that you will be calm and in a positive situation to work on your subject and work on your project most of the time the team um, or the ACIBA team is working in a happy atmosphere and in a happy way because our customer are most of the time happy and glad to help you and is contacting us to say whoa that's amazing whoa thank you whoa you have fixed my issue my problem i'm really happy thank you very much and this is way better than having people who are not happy who are complaining who are saying hey you are you you didn't help me i'm not happy i don't want to work with you anymore and this way the support team is really happy and, and we, um, we have more time and more ideas and the best feeling to work on our subject and uh, it's something which is really important. Last thing is the teamwork. As I said, assimilating wouldn't be at the top level without customers so you have to pay, uh, pay attention to the customers, to their feedbacks and you always have to ask yourself some question about why this customer had an issue or a problem. Is it because you acted in a wrong way? Is it because you didn't make it simple or clear? And you have always to ask yourself about it and the, the teamwork will and the, yes, the teamwork will be something which will be really important for you because customer will recommend you, you will do some amazing job for them and this will keep going and this will be really something interesting. So, that's all for today. 
sorry for things which were not clear enough and let me know if you have any question about everything I talked about. I want the name of the, the help desk app. I didn't understand. Help Scouts. It's I'm, I'm sorry, M. Okay, help, help, help Scouts. Uh, help Scouts. Yes. Right. I don't know. Scouts. Scouts. Scouts, yes. Okay. Is it, uh, uh, is it, it's open source? Sorry? Or paid? Uh, it's it's something paid? you have to pay. Ah, okay. But I think it costs 15 euros every month. Every month? Yes, so it's. It, I, I'm not sure, but it's okay. not really expensive. Awesome. And yeah. it's something which is awesome. Really, it's something which. As I said, I can't think about a new project. Even if I'm leaving the company or something like that, the first thing I will uh, use is. Uh, this kind of tool in order to manage everything, to be clear and not to do a lot of things which are useless. Yes, thank you. <coughs> Any other question? Do, do Let you me know. Like give a, a test for potential plans to test your product before? Sorry? Do you have like a demo that you give your plan, potential plans before they can actually? delve into the subscription? Yes, we have two things. The first thing is we have a demo website so people can uh, try as many, try our product and make sure they will, be, they will be able to test everything. Second thing is we have a uh, money back policy. I, I am answering the right question? <laughs> yeah. I okay, uh, we have a money back policy which says that if people are not happy, they can ask us for a refund and we will reform the money and they will be able so they will this way they will be able to test and make sure it fit their needs to before having to 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 confirm their subscription. So how many days money back guarantee? Ten days, fifteen days? Uh thirty days. Sorry. Any other question? <laughs> Maybe something which was as and clear enough or... Okay, so thank you for your attention.